You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. How's it going, Los Angeles? This is The Startup with Monique LeRae. I'm Monique LeRae. Thank you for, for joining me on a very special Sunday, June 18th, uh, Father's Day. Um, thank you. I know that a lot of people are out celebrating with their fathers, father figures, people, men in their lives that are important. And um, thank you for taking the time to tune in uh, if you are on this Father's Day. I want to give a big shout out to my father, Alan Stinson. Dad, I love you. Shout out. Um, today we had a, an hour long conversation catching up. Um, and uh, I was actually supposed to be there with him today. Um, and you know, I'm doing my MBA program. I began it this summer. I don't know if a lot of you know that, but I'll, I'll share that with you here. Um, on the startup and, um, it's proving to be, uh, quite, um, quite a load of information, of growth, of knowledge, um, pushing my boundaries in a good way. Um, and so I, called him today and I just said, dad, I am exhausted. I could come and have lunch with you. Um, he lives about an hour, hour and a half from me. I could come have lunch with you today. I would have to drive right back after our lunch and be on the air with you guys. Um, and I would be exhausted. And he just said, you know, the best father's day gift you could give me today is that you rest. <laughs> and I thought that was really kind of him. Um, to 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 share his day with me and and give me that space to to maneuver. He knows the big picture. He knows the goals, and he's on board for that. And and so I really am giving a, a big shout out to my father today, and I'm appreciating him providing space for me to to uh, reschedule our our Father's Day date together. So we'll meet up tomorrow, and I'll spoil him and enjoy his company. But if you are um, out there and you are thinking of your father or father figure or someone, a man in your life that's important, that's taught you some things and um, you've gained uh, a better perspective in life uh, or gained anything from knowing them, make sure you text them, call them and give them some love. Um, it's really important that I think fathers, men, um, pillars in the community uh, that support, you know, people like myself who are um, independent minded and business driven, they, they are the backbone for people like myself. Um, having their support and their love um, in all things is important. So make sure you make time in your day, even if it's just a message to say thank you to them or let them know that you're thinking of them. It means a lot. And I know that fathers sometimes uh, get overlooked out here. So um, for, to the good fathers out there um, and the good men out there that are father figures, a shout out to you today. All right. And I know shout out to Sam. He's running the station today on Father's Day. He owns LA Talk Radio. He's the father. Shout out to Sam. Thank you for working on Father's Day, Sam, and uh, being selfless today. <laughs> he texted me. Thank you. He's a sweetheart. Guys, hey, first of all, if you're not following LA Talk Radio, please do, do yourself a favor and follow them on all platforms. You know, they're growing this brand. Sam is open to new ideas. He's new, new content, um, new, new guests and, and, and talented people that are on his station. Uh, it all comes from the top. So Sam set that um, in motion many years ago. And so if you are not following us, please follow us on um, at LA Talk Radio on Instagram. Facebook has their own page and um, on all social media platforms. And I think respectively, you know, Sam, I think the numbers are getting up there for you, my friend. I think you're close to 8,000 plus followers on Facebook. Congratulations. I think even on Instagram, um, he's, he's gaining followership there. So let's encourage independent um, radio stations that that really support entrepreneurs and free speech. Oh, wow. Excuse me. Congratulations, Sam. 15,000 on LA Talk Radio's Facebook page. Oh, my gosh. That's huge. That's huge. And um, and growing. You know, we're not going to stop there. And uh, Sam and I talk offline often about growing the brand and how we can push it out. It's irreverent. I can be myself here. My guests can be themselves. 
And that's the beauty of LA Talk Radio and, and, and the heart of his brand. And, and I'm sure, Sam, uh, in the mornings, you guys can catch some replays there. Why don't you just, you know, type it in your browser, www.latalkradio.com. You can see all the talented uh, people on the platform. You can see Sam. His show is uh, famous for Sam in the mornings. Um, he pops on from time to time, and uh, he's a really great um boss. He's a boss. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, and if you're not following this show, I'm trying to grow my individual platforms for this show. It's at the startup with Monique Loray. And I'm right here at the startup with Monique Loray. It's a long name, but uh, it would be longer if I put my last name. So we've, sh we've shortened it a little bit for you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to some sponsors. Uh, Michael Solberg Family Wines, uh, shout out to Leah Solberg. Leah, um, thank you so much for keeping the brand and growing that beautiful wine brand that your father founded many years ago. I know he's not with us here physically, but I know he's with you in spirit on Father's Day today. So a special shout out to Michael Solberg Family Wines and Leah and her family on today, on Father's Day. Um, also, La Costa del Camino. Um, listen, guys, it's getting sunny out here, um, here in Laguna Beach. And if you are looking to do a staycation, get away from it all in San Diego or Los Angeles, Temecula, uh, Las Vegas, San Francisco, any surrounding major cities or little cities. If you just want to come to the beach, uh, come out to Laguna Beach. You really enjoy it. We have a lot of art, a lot of culture. It's diverse. Um, and you can stay at La Casa del Camino. It is on the beach. Uh, you'll absolutely love it. And uh, there's a lot of great food choices. There's Mexican food. Uh, there's um, there's uh, Thai food. There is um, a beautiful eclectic menu on property. So um, give a big warm welcome and a shout out when you do visit La Casa del Camino and say hello to the GM, Felton Calhoun. He's our friend there and he will roll out the red carpet for you and do whatever he and his staff will do, whatever it takes to make you comfortable there. Um, a very beautiful rooftop. If you if you ever come out here, you'll know uh, Rooftop Bar as being a notable spot that people stop and uh, enjoy the views when the sun's out. So um, people often come there to see uh, Catalina Island uh, from the rooftop bar. And you can also see sometimes if it's clear, you can actually see Long Beach and some of the boats and the container ships there. So it's a beautiful place here. And I'm seeing a lot of out of state plates around town. And so that means it's summertime here at the beach and a lot of people are coming in. So a shout out to everybody here in Laguna Beach and um, in LA and Southern California in general. All right, um, last but not least, I wanna give a shout out to Shane Hyman at Global uh, Next Level Global Solutions. Um, he's doing amazing work to uh, bridge the equity and inclusion gap for people of color and help build wealth in many communities. And um, you don't have to be of color to to join. He is all inclusive. And, you know, the more, the better. And we can all learn from each other and kind of grow. And so he's got some really great offerings there. So check him out at uh, Next Level Global Solutions on Instagram and the website, too. You can uh, sign up from for their platform, fill out the form. I've done it. We're going to actually have him back soon to go over how to actually become a member of what he's doing and understand the financial platform that he's building. He's doing something really special there. So shout out to Shane today and happy Father's Day, Shane, as well. Uh, and Felton. Okay, so I think I covered the Father's Day stuff. Um, now, I do know it's tricky on holidays when I book guests and everyone is on top of their game and um, I understand on Sundays, it's already a little difficult. Um, it's family day for a lot of people. It's um, service day, church day, meditation day, exercise, you know, consciousness day, whatever people do to relax. I know that Sunday, oftentimes entrepreneurs and everyday people observe uh, Sundays for that. So let's make some space for our guests today if they don't show up. Um, and that's what we're going to do here because um, we're the startup and things happen. So I want to also fill you guys in on some really exciting things. And I hope you'll you'll enjoy. Um, I think I spoke recently about uh, one of the startups that I've been working on. And I have a, you know, a, a really exciting um, perspective of this startup. Um, I'm very uh 
proud to be a part of it. And I think that there's something that we all can learn once we roll it all the way out. There's only certain things I can share at this juncture, but I will share with you. I've been working with um, Selwyn Jones and a lot of people who know him and even people who have just met him call him Uncle Selwyn. And he is uh, George Floyd's uncle. And I know when I say George Floyd, uh, it feels political and it feels um, sometimes stressful or it angers people or it makes people sad or people just have an array of emotions when I say that. And I know that this is a uh, startup show. It's a, a business centric uh, entrepreneurial space. But I want to I, I want to explain why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on this and how that ties in. Uh, we cover a lot of topics here, um, but it, all, all roads have to lead back to business, you know, and startups and, and supporting entrepreneurs and growing their brand. So this is um, if you'll allow me uh, to, to share a little. This is why um, it ties in. I was approached by Uncle Selwyn, I think, Christmas morning of last year of 2020 and there was a message in my uh, Facebook messenger and he reached out and said hey I would love to speak with you I want to work with you I have some ideas and he introduced himself and you know I was um, quite um, it was one of those moments as an entrepreneur as someone who is interested in as a producer uh, to tell stories that maybe people might not want to tell or get to the bottom of things and and shed some light on things that maybe are a little less um, comfortable for people to do. Uh, it was a moment for me that was beautiful because I I was like, wow, maybe this is a story I would like to tell. But at first I wanted to learn more. Um, I saw the message. I didn't get back to him right away. I think I was really busy with a lot of stuff traveling, as you guys know, if you follow my journey here on the show um, and doing some other projects. But Eventually, the moment we spoke, we connected. Um, I found out that there was a lot more under the surface from just George Floyd's name and him being his uncle. Um, and I saw an opportunity for a brand to grow. But before the brand could grow, I, I wanted to um, share the story a little bit more. And there's a lot of layers, right? I mean, listen, we're humans, we're complicated. Um, I'm sure I'm complicated. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes and I'm still growing and we all have. And um, I think that the best way to grow is to self-reflect and own what you've done and what you haven't done and really learn from things and move forward. So I treated that with the same, I, I brought that lens of understanding and belief into this. Um, so I'm excited to share with you that out of something really, really um, hurtful and tragic and um, you know at a time where America was quite divided over politics and beliefs and prejudices and a lot of ugly things that unfortunately are still in this world um, something beautiful has blossomed and has been work they've been working on something beautiful before I even met them so I want to introduce to you guys a website hope929.org it's real simple, www.hope929.org. We had Uncle Selwyn on and Liz Darden, who are founders and who run hope929.org. We brought them on about a week or two ago. Uh, you can look back in the archives and, and check that out to get a further understanding of what that is. So out of um, that tragic thing that we all saw on television or heard about, if we didn't view the video, um, came hope. Um, Uncle Selwyn's mission is to take the murder, the very public and tragic murder of his nephew and help people. And I want to have a, a candid conversation with you guys about that. I wonder if there's a space for us as humans these days, as entrepreneurs, as moms and dads, especially dads today, as aunties, as friends, people, individuals, whatever you are, whomever you are, I wonder if there is a space in our heart, in our minds, to perhaps explore um, this topic with, the, with, the, with, the, with an open mind. Um, oftentimes we are fed things and we, you know, I'm in the media, so I understand, you know, we, we can only 
pay attention to so many things. We have our lives, we're paying bills and making a living and providing for our families and creating a life and traveling and doing whatever we're doing. But I wonder if there's a space for us in this moment in time where we could perhaps observe something that we maybe prejudged and we didn't have all the facts. Um, I'm asking you this because, and I'm, I'm posing this to you because there's a story here that I think you'll be, you'll be interested to hear. Um, Uncle Selwyn's mission after his, his nephew was murdered was to take that pain and that anger and leverage that to help people. And when you first hear that, you're like, well, and some people will say, you know, George Floyd was an addict. He stole a counterfeit $20 bill or tried to pass that uh, to purchase goods at the liquor store. And um, some of those things might, might be true. Um, I think the story here, though, is someone saying we're not advocating um, for George Floyd's perfection, right? We're not saying he was a saint <laughs> or or anything. We're not even sure about the counterfeit uh, $20 bill. And of course, we know that that's wrong. We all work hard for our money, or maybe some don't work hard for their money, but it's your money. And we want to, you know, we want to be respectful of that. But I think what we need to understand is that the family, for Uncle Selwyn's sake anyway, in his, his organization, they're not advocating that George was perfect or without flaws. I think what they're advocating is that that was wrong. And in a society where we pay taxes as entrepreneurs, as you know, parents and, and friends and, 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 and citizens of America, we pay taxes so that certain systems are in place to keep us safe. And I think we can all agree that we want those systems to be upheld so that we can keep order and peace in our lives. And I think that's why a lot of people were angry um, and there's another narrative that, hey, he was an addict, he deserved it, he's drug free now because he's dead. There's a lot of nasty things that people are saying and the humanity has been lost for a lot of people over this topic. So I'm a little long winded on this, but I wanted to just say that we're offering an avenue out of that pain um, for hope and that's hope929.org. And what they're advocating for is a bill that will put uh, medical services in place for folks if they're in police custody or they're being questioned by police and they're having a medical emergency, if they can't breathe, if they're having cardiac arrest, if they're having an episode of any psychological, um, in, in the psychological nature or anything medical, uh, that they can um, they can get some assistance. So the, uh, the police, uh, the, the, the arresting officer, the authority in charge can stop and give them the care that they deserve, right, as a human. So um, we're exploring that and um, it's called the Medical Civil Rights Bill. And they are leveraging at Hope 929, uh, the murder of George Floyd to advocate for that. So I thought that that was just a beautiful way to, to um, turn something negative that we all saw or heard about um, into something positive and paying it forward to the community. So if we could perhaps just have a little open-mindedness here, I'm sharing this charity and this foundation with you because we cover all types of businesses here and they are offering something really beautiful for people. And um, we're gonna tell more, we're working on a project um, and we're gonna kind of um, pull back the, the curtain, if you will, and show you guys a little bit more to the story. and open up a dialogue. So I'm excited that, you know, I'm helping them build a brand that's gonna help some people and turn something negative um, and that pain and anger that that Uncle Selwyn and his family feel um, into something positive for the community. So I wanna pose the question to you. If you were in that situation, if you had a loved one or a friend um, that was less than perfect, that maybe had substance abuse issues in their past or had other issues in their past, you would want, would you want them to have a right to have a day in court and and um, have their civil rights upheld? And I'm hoping that the answer is yes. Um, would you take that pain and turn it into something for others? 
And it's not everybody's job to do that, right? It's, it's hard enough to, to deal with that loss. These people are launching a brand, not to make money, but to help. Um, so tomorrow's Juneteenth, uh, it's June 19, and that is Freedom Day for a lot of African Americans, Black Americans, and there's you know a lot of conversation about it and a lot of information that people don't understand or you know um, haven't done a deep dive. And I get it, we're busy. If it's not really your issue or it's not affecting you, and um, you're not really gonna you know necessarily gravitate toward that, right? You know, I I'm not a um, I don't deep sea dive. So I'm not doing a, a deep dive, pun intended, into the deep sea diving world. Or, you know, I, I don't play um, pickleball, which is so popular these days. And, um, you know, I had a guest on a few weeks ago that loves pickleball. So maybe I'm not paying attention to pickleball, right? These are horrible examples. But I want to offer you something that could affect everyone because we all have to live together. And, and hopefully we can live in a little bit, a little bit better world. So that's my my tease and my setup for this brand that we're launching. So more to come. Um, and that goes back to business because I was able to use some skills that I have as a producer um, that I've acquired over the 20 plus years that I've been a producer to to help and um, to add equity for them in this way. So stay tuned. There'll be more. And I promise you the way that we're doing this won't hopefully i can't promise you this but hopefully our intention is not to offend anyone or cause anyone to feel um uh, um to feel um that they need to change you know any political party or anything we're not advocating for that we want you to be who you are uh, we trust that that works for you but with hope 929.org um, and George Floyd's family and Uncle Selwyn, they are looking to just advocate for some change. So there you have it. That's my pre-Juneteenth um, spill there. I want to also encourage you guys to follow my personal Instagram page at Monique Lorray Stinson. My name is right there. <laughs> right there. Um, and Stinson, you can add Stinson on the end there on Instagram. So it's just at Monique Larray, and then you'll add S T I N S O N. That's my personal page. So my personal thoughts, my pictures, I share my world there. So that's going to be quite different from my business page. And you can follow me on Instagram at the startup with Monique Larray. And my media page is at Capricorius Media at gmail.com. And, you know, hey, DM me if you feel like you are someone that could add to that conversation or you want um, a consultant to help you with your startup. I have a lot of experience and I hope that I can help uh, push your brand forward and help you out. Maybe even have you on the show. Um, we we welcome everyone of all walks of life, all businesses, all brands of way of thinking. We're not here to change anyone, but rather offer um, more information. So that's my intent on doing this project, and you'll see me do more. Um, so yeah, so thanks for letting me got you, let me ran on that, guys. Um, I'm really excited because these guests that are coming on today are uh, speaking of all walks of life. They really do have many different assets to bring to the business world, and a lot of people are authors that we've been um, working with. One in particular, um, this is Dr. Tiffany Tate, and she is. Um, She's doing a child's book and it's called Bad Touching. So she's um, she's advocating for children to have a safer world and, you know, have some boundaries when they're young. And it's a color filled uh, book. It's an easy read. It's something that I think will really inspire parents to look into. Um, it must be under. Let's see how many pages we have with Miss Tiffany Tate. Um, I think we're under 20 pages, you know, so it's a really easy read. It's about 25 pages, you guys. You could totally get into this. Bad Touching by Dr. Tiffany Tate. If you want to um, hear a little bit about her, this is her. Beautiful woman, beautiful advocate, um, an author. And I'm going to read a little bit about her, okay, guys, because um, I think it's great to highlight on pre-Juneteenth some, some authors um, from our community. Dr. Tiffany Tate is originally from Compton, California, and this is her second book. 
She graduated from the University of California at Santa Barbara, which if you guys aren't familiar, is about an hour and a half out from LA. She gained her bachelor's of science degree in cellular and developmental biology. And she had a, a minor in black studies. After earning her medical doctorate degree from Meharry Medical College and completing her OBGYN internship at the Naval Medical Center in San Diego, she went on to serve as a general medical officer, a GMO, for the Seabees. She served during Operation Enduring Freedom during the Global War on Terrorism. Uh, Dr. Dr. Tate went on to do her uh, gynecological residency at Vanderbilt uh, University in Nashville, Tennessee. She practiced for 20 years before sustaining a hand injury that led her to medical retirement. And I understand that because you need to have all your faculties working if you're working on people and, and assisting people. So she began writing poems as an outlet for her emotions, which led to her first book, Flow Try, and it might be pronounced Flow A Try, so she'll have to correct me on that. A collection of 108 poetic flows of life, love, and literistic, excuse me, rhetorical issues. Dr. Tate maintains her board certified status with the American Board of Obstetrics and Ob stressed. I can never say that, guys. <laughs> Obstetrics, right? OBG, it's an OBGYN word. <laughs> we'll go with that. And spends her extra time lecturing residents in training and the community of women's health issues. She is an ordained wedding officiant with the Universal Life Church and a loving mother of two young adults. She stays active in her community by serving her church as a trustee and being active in the local graduate cha uh, chapter of her sorority. This is a busy woman. I thought I was busy. Shout out to Dr. Tate. Um, as a child, she had the misfortune, unfortunately, of, of experiencing some abuse. Okay. She did not tell anyone until after she was in her 40s. As a writer, she felt it was time to use this platform and her platform meaning where she's made it now, I'm, I'm assuming, to provide children with the opportunities that she wished she, that were available to her. And you know what? That's a startup story right there. Bad touching, under 25 pages. There's beautiful colors here. It's very easy to read. Um, I would encourage someone to pick this up if you have children uh, that you are rearing in the, under the age of 10, uh, maybe under the age of 15, whatever suits you as a parent or educator. Um, I think that that would be really great to add to your repertoire. Um, and uh, she just drew from her experiences and she started this big, this business of writing books and poems. So that's great. That's a, a successful startup story. Kind of like how this show started uh, drawing from um, being always being entrepreneurial and maybe not having the resources or the outlets. Um, not that I didn't, that I couldn't get the outlets. I'm, I don't want to frame it that way, but maybe not having uh, within arm's length where I could go to have conversations about business and startup struggles and triumph. So that's how I started the startup, right? So shout out to Dr. Tiffany Tate. Thank you so much for adding to the literary world from some painful things you probably experienced and some beautiful things that you've experienced and um, sharing that with us. So I love seeing this. Love, love, love. So we'll have her on soon. And uh, hopefully in the next week or so, if my schedule uh, provides and her schedule provides, we'll have her here. All right, Sam, um, give me an update. Sam, what you got going on over there at Heli Talk Radio in behind the scenes? He's awesome. He always uh, messages me in case you guys are new. Okay, that's okay. It, it is a holiday, guys. Like I said, it's Father's Day. People might um, get a little bit sidetracked or busy, and it's a busy world. Now, I want to give you guys an update on the pandemic trilogies, right? Oh, there's a reminder. Uh, yes, so there's a lot going on in, the, in that world. I was supposed to be in Tribeca uh, for the film festival, and I think it ended yesterday or today. So shout out to Tribeca Film Festival. I'll be there next year, hopefully, with the films. We have many, many parts to share with you. And there's a lot of other film festivals that we want to be a part of. But I think what we're going to do is self-publish the first film. I'm toying with that idea in my head. There's many ways to do it. Would you guys watch? Uh, you know, get into the comments later and let me know if you'd watch. Uh, it'll be a 90-minute documentary. Um, 
we've explored cities across America in the first film. It's the world's first docu-trilogy that I created. The first installation will be the Pandemic Project documentary, top to bottom, from Alaska to Puerto Rico, from New York to uh, Dallas, from Chicago to Las Vegas, uh, from Phoenix to Portland, you know, and it just goes on and on. So we could list the cities for you, but you get the gist of, of where we've covered for the first film. Uh, we interviewed and surveyed um, everyday people's experiences. And I think the way we've put, put it together, I think you guys would really enjoy it. Uh, so that's what's coming up um, down the pike here, and I'll keep you abreast. Um, the second one is the pandemic film, which explores the international version of the docu trilogy. And I think I did a count, Sam, last no as of the last November, I think it was 38 countries in 22 months. Sam's been on the journey with me. He knows. <laughs> um, he he's definitely been helping me out there. I think one one time I was on the tarmac during Super Bowl when the Super Bowl was in LA and I was on the tarmac uh, in Turkey heading to Israel and I missed the show by an hour. And I'm, I'm really on time with my things here, right? So I try to be, anyway, I put a little more reminders and notes, but sometimes a time zone might slip in there that you didn't account for and you might gain or lose um, an hour. And that's what happened. And I literally was on the tarmac and I messaged Sam and I said, Sam, I messed up, you know, please run a rerun. And he was so kind. And that's kind of giving you an idea of the culture here at LA Talk Radio. He's really, really kind and um, he understands the life of entrepreneurs. So that was, I think, one of the rare times I've missed my show. Right, Sam? I don't usually miss my show. So <laughs> so um, there's many um, ins and outs in that in that documentary and uh, it has an international feel to it. And then the third part, which is the endemic project documentary, which is the cause and effect, right? We saw a lot of cause and effect. Uh, oh, I love you, Sam. <laughs> he gave me a shout out in the comment. Uh, you are too, Sam. Um, but yeah, the cause and effect of the, the pandemic, right? We saw a lot of people fall in love. We saw a lot of people get divorced. We saw a lot of people um, find a new path for their business. We saw a lot of people retire from a miserable job or career, or maybe they just want to do something different. We saw a lot of shifts during the pandemic, didn't we, as a collective? Um, a lot of people would be conscious of where they send their energy, where they're spending their time. And I think that could be a positive takeaway, right? Even if you did get a divorce, maybe it was for your for the betterment of your life. I don't know. Um, but what we did do in the films, and I'm very impressed with my team and the intention of the films was not to give uh, a political perspective, a medical perspective, necessary, um, excuse me, medical advice um, on a pandemic, but rather let people be people and let them have their say. Let them say how they felt. How did it affect them? Because, you know, everyone was covering the political things at that time, and I didn't want to do that. I thought, hey, you shouldn't know how I feel about this at all as the director and the producer. You should just see people telling you how they feel and how they've been going through it. So the last little piece of that, we're going in August, if all goes well, to South Africa, which is really far away. Uh, I've been around the world a couple of times with Sam and and and, and this show um, and the film, but uh, that'll be our last stop for the last part of the docu trilogy. So I think we're going to go ahead and self-publish the first uh, the first installation. What do I mean by self-publish? Uh, exploring platforms that are outside of your traditional um, networks. And that could be a positive, you know? Um, it gives people instant access to the content. We get instant feedback. Uh, we will charge. It costs money to make it. We kept it pretty lean. And we had, you know, people who were involved, entrepreneurs and, and people kind of cheering us on and they'll be included in it. But uh, you know, we'll keep you posted because I know I've been talking about it for over two and a half, three years now. So we want to at least get something out there to show you that this did happen, but also just to show you guys. And if you're not too burned out, watch it when you will. You know, it's going to always be there. And I, I understand that there is absolute pandemic burnout and uh, we all want to move on. And we have. We're starting to. How do you guys feel? Get into my comments. How do you feel about um, seeing... Uh, a reflective um, piece on that time in our in our lives. Um, hopefully you, you get some good popcorn and refreshments and you just enjoy 
uh, people sharing you sharing with you about their journey. Um, the goal also in the films is is and was was and is uh, to cover a lot. Cover when I say cover a lot, I mean different um, businesses, different uh, lifestyles, uh, different cultures. Um, how certain sections of the world and or country um, handled it um, so that you had a macro view of what was going on. Cause we were all kind of just in it, right? Just trying to, just trying to survive, just trying to figure this thing out. And, and, and it was a lot of things going on. So um, I hope we're offering you something that you haven't seen. And I have a feeling that we are, uh, there weren't a lot of people that that were running around the world during that time with cameras, unless they worked for the news perhaps or other stations, but we did it in a very unfiltered way because I didn't have, um, I didn't have to answer to any network or any big large conglomerate that would control uh, the creativity and the way that we went. So we were able to do this um, and be, um, and be neutral. That was my main goal, be neutral. Um, so shout out to everyone involved, but I will give you an update this summer because I'm, I think we're going to go ahead and launch the first film finally. Um, and then circulate the second two around the, the film festivals again. So that's kind of the process. I wanted to just give you guys a shout out and, um, excuse me, not a shout out, but an update on that. So, um, a little long winded there. Uh, but yeah, it's father's day. So I'm, I'm going to keep you guys, um, entertained with some other things. So. Let's talk about the NBA. Um, how many of you are in a class right now or possibly exploring higher education or in it, you know, um, in it right now to 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 broaden your horizons in that way? I would love to pose that question and, and hit me in the comments. Um, how are you finding that path? Um, I know that there's a lot of grants out there, um, uh, scholarships.com. I know that there are, um, is it scholarship, Al? I need to look it up. There's so many scholarships for every person on the planet. If you are tall, if you are um, um, going into law enforcement, if you are in the medical field, if you're a woman, if you're a gentleman, if you are um, Latino or Hispanic, if you are um, you know, it just whatever you are, there are so many ways to get there. Um, I would say put yourself out there because I put myself out there for my MBA and they're only selecting the certain people in, in each cohort. And I was I was over the moon when they chose me, still flattered and honored. And um, shout out to to everyone in my cohort in my MBA program. Uh, we had a session this weekend. It was amazing. It's a lot of work. Um, I'm not at liberty to disclose everything because I think um, having some, um, you know, having some boundaries there is good, but it's a process that's really pushing me to grow as an entrepreneur. I am immediately applying a lot of the things that I'm learning in my everyday practices as an entrepreneur to be better, to be sharper, to be on top of things, to help others grow their brand more efficiently, save money, save time, because time is money and money is time, and energy, because money is also energy. Um, so I'm really excited to be implementing those things that I'm learning. And I think this is the third or fourth session I've done um, already. We meet, um, you know, we meet quite frequently and we it's a heavy session and it's just, it's just rich with information that I would have never had um, access to if I didn't put myself in it. I want to also say um, I didn't really overthink it. I tend to be a type of person that once I get the idea to do it, just go for it. Same with this podcast. I just reached out to Sam. <laughs> Sam, you remember that call, right? Hey, <laughs> you know, I just reached out to Sam and I said, I have an idea. I'm just going to go for it. And oftentimes, People are crazy enough to join you on the journey. And here we are, Sam. I think we're going on four years soon this September. Can you believe it? Um, we'll have to do a, a four-year a special uh, show. But I'm saying all that to say, I know, right? It is. Yes, he said yes. Um, I'm saying all that to say, if you have an idea and you, you're not quite clear on how to get there, if you're not quite clear on how to fully go the whole way, right? You don't see 
the money to do it or the path or the game plan or the business plan or the um, mission statement or who's going to help you or how can I do this? You've got kids and a family or maybe you have, um, you know, a disability or um, a health issue or you just don't have the support, right? You just don't know how to do it, right? I want to encourage you to really identify why that idea is in your head really identify why it's still coming up for you if it keeps coming up. I'm assuming, you know, we act on things that just keep showing up because there's a reason it shows up, right? Um, I really want to encourage you to explore that and and say, hey, man, you know, I, I don't need to see it all, but let me write this down. You know, oftentimes I hear if you've heard something multiple times um, about yourself or about your behavior or about um, something that you offer, have a look at it because maybe there's some truth to that, right? It could be good or bad that we have to take an introspection and, and a look at. But business-wise, if you have an idea, it's coming from somewhere and maybe the world needs it. I know that sounds corny. <laughs> I don't mean to be corny today. But I, I, because I, I'm saying all that to say, guys, that I'm seeing things that I've been watering. I, I put an analogy as like I planted some seeds in many different business gardens and idea gardens, and they're starting to sprout and grow because I've been watering them. With this podcast, I aimed to do this consistently, not do it um, on a LeBron James level for back, lack of a better uh, example, you know, not to play at my top game. I knew coming into it that I've never been a broadcaster or had any radio experience really, but I knew I liked people. I knew I liked ideas and entrepreneurship, and I knew I wanted uh, to foster an environment where we could all have a discussion about it and support, right? And learn some things. So I just said consistency is the first thing. So I'm going to be here consistently with you, even when I'm tired or don't feel like doing it. I feel like doing it because the consistency will equal trust and the trust will have more people get behind you, right? Because you want someone that you can depend on or that you know something's coming out, content, consistent content. And for those times I was traveling and, you know, airing the um, airing the reruns, we had to, we had to because, um, you know, the time zones and me not being 100%, I wanted to be 100% for you. So... I say all that to say, if you start something, just be consistent, just focus on being good at it or okay. Um, and then graduate to the level of being better, right? Then the, shine it up a little bit and polish some things. And you're gonna see this show becoming even more polished, but the goal, even when you're tired, even when you don't feel like doing it is to show up, right? In anything, if you're an athlete, you show up to practice. When you're tired, you're sore, your muscles hurt, you're, 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 you're jet lagged, whatever you show up for practice and those practices um they uh they yield results so think of this as um a, a platform that came from that you guys in my early shows during the pandemic you saw me doing it in my car i uh i lived in a condo at the time my wi-fi was not great and i wanted and i wanted and sam and i for a while we were trying to get that right you know and i was on a limited budget for this because I had other things going out for the film and I'm a one woman show here. So I had a lot of different things going out and I had to drive my car around the corner to Starbucks. I buy my little green tea of frap with light whipped cream and I would use their Wi-Fi, and I did it from my car. I needed to be consistent no matter what. No matter for if the Wi-Fi, I had to get to where the Wi-Fi was good. If I had to get a library card and go to the library, I would do that. So my point is there's, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, that's cheesy, but it's cheesy because it's probably great. It's probably good, right? So where there's a will, there's a way. So carve out what you can commit to um, and do that consistently and just show up and do it. So that's my pep talk. That's the <laughs> athletic Monique pet top, you know, um, if you will. Um, I also want to encourage you guys, if you haven't, ordered your 4th of July celebration um, goodies, I want you to go to www.michaelsolbergfamilywines and grab some wine, if you drink wine. Um, 
You could do it, give it as a gift if you're coming over for Fourth of July barbecue. Um, Leah Solberg and Michael Solberg's slogan is and always will be for the foreseeable future. Their wine pairs well with the glass, right? So you don't have to worry about being an expert at pairing or um, having a charcuterie, charcuterie board. Or, you know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to worry about that. It pairs well with the glass. And uh, you can have that, bring that over for your friends as a welcome gift for the barbecue or your 4th of July celebration. If you don't drink wine um, and you don't uh, drink alcohol, there's other great things out there. Um, shout out to this energy drink. I was trying to find it, actually. Um, I drank it so fast. It was so delicious and it's non-alcoholic. It's called Marquise. Uh, it's an energy drink. Um, so shout out to Marquise. It's spelled M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. And I found them at a gifting suite or excuse me, at a charity event recently. It's a green um, bottle. It's amazing. Um, look into that. Maybe you could bring that to, to your party. But what are you guys doing for the 4th of July? Um, again, if you don't have a place to stay in uh, Laguna Beach in the Orange County area, in the Southern California area, and you want to come to the beach, LaCasaDelCamino.com offers beautiful renovated rooms. Uh, it's a very Spanish, uh, I think it's a cross between Spanish and Mediterranean, but because of the name, it's it's, it's a Spanish um, hotel. Um, and I think you guys are going to find there's live music, there's an on-site restaurant, there's a rooftop bar up top. I think you really enjoy that. Um, also, we have some other things coming up. We have um, the ESPYs Awards. Um, shout out to the Harris Brothers. They're on this channel as well. Hi, Mark. Hi, Matthew. Um, they're doing the ESPYs Gifting Suite. Um, they also have the Emmys Gifting Suite coming up in the fall. I know that there's a writer's strike, so some things might be shifted or affected. I'm not quite sure yet, but we would love to have you if you're a brand, if you want to get in the swag bag, if you want to be a sponsor, if you want to get around 100 celebrities, media, and press. Uh, it will be in Beverly Hills at a very, very beautiful location. I can't tell tell you the location, but uh, if you do join us, we will disclose that to you if you come on board and be with us. Um, also, I don't know if I showed you guys this on the last show. I want to give a shout out to Yes. Yes, Cacao. Um, let's see if I can get it like this. It kind of looks like a little mini book set. Isn't that cute? I think I, I showed you guys this, but I was so impressed with it. Uh, they have three different flavors here that they're they're premiering. Uh, right away, I had all of them. And I'm not really a sweet tooth person, but this was great because they were low in sugar. It's clean. It's uh, got raw, it's raw and vegan. And uh, the sugar is low. And they have little messages in the um, booklet, the, the, the chocolate booklet, if you will. It explains to you where they derive the chocolate from. It gives you a backstory. There's a hand signature from the makers, the owners. And um, he calls himself, Justin calls himself the minister of chocolate. And I just thought this was cool because it takes you on a little um, a little experience, a chocolate experience. So this one is actually, um, I want to say this is the mint because of the coloring. But it has, uh, yeah, a little hint of mint. It's dark and earthy. The second uh, installation in the chocolate booklet here with uh, Yes Cacao is... Brain Power, Turmeric, Lion Mane, and Ginkgo. And it's so cute. Sam, isn't this cute? You should get some of these. Do you like chocolate? Um, yeah, it breaks down the ingredients. Oh, you do? Okay, we, maybe we got to get a kit to you. And the third installation here is Make a Wish and Take a Bite. So they take you on a little, a little chocolate journey. I think it's cute. This one's kind of cute. It's got an owl. Bliss Out is what it's called. Turmeric, Kava, and Gaba. Um, and it breaks down the ingredients and it's hand signed each one. So I think these are really great gifts for your 4th of July celebration, along with your hot dogs and everything else we do with Michael Solberg Family Wines and maybe some of this um, Yes Cacao. That You can't beat that combination. So check them out. Um, they're doing great things. And I thoroughly enjoyed it very fast. Down the hatch it went. All right, guys. That's it. Have a beautiful rest of your Father's Day. I will see you next week. We have a full show. And um, thanks for joining. And, and what will you start up today? I will see you next week. Be good to one another. And thanks for being here. Ciao. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae only on LA Talk Radio.